Hello everybody! Welcome to the next episode! In the last episode, we did Carl's Gag Wheel. And this episode we're gonna be going after and in this bonus episode we're gonna be going after Landis Gag Wheel, so let's get right to it. Well I figure she probably reacted to the Nox Nictoris. Nirvana, you mean? Yeah. Still, I can't believe I completely lost control. That's troubling. I'm gonna need to make some more adjustments. Are you taking her back to the lab? Yes, I need to do more research. I'll transfer her back now, all right? Sure, I don't mind. Are you sure you can do that, though? Well, it's not like I have any other choice, is it? God damn it. Okay, activating transfer. Activating spatial transfer. Now, if I remember correctly, to get her gag reel, you need to pick the first option, re-enter designated coordinates. The place is unfamiliar. Small plants grow out of the thin red soil. The air is dry, and off in the, into the distance, a great range of rugged black mountains can be seen. After blinking several, several times, Landa slowly surveys her surroundings. Landa! Are you alright? Landa, respond! Analyzing situation. Analyzing situation. Analysis. Complete. I think there was an error in our spatial transfer calculations. I'd love to come and pick you up, but I've kind of got my hands full at the moment. Don't worry. <laughs> of course not. Anyway, I've got to go run the root data now. So do you think you can make it home without getting lost? You should be able to handle that on your own, Lambda. Understood. I don't know why you would, but no detours, all right? Understood. Searching database for the meaning of detour. Search complete. The meaning of detour. To visit somewhere other than one's planned destination, or to take an alternate route to a predetermined destination. Verifying current location. Searching. 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 Search completed. Analysis of situation complete. As Landa started to step forward, she felt something warm and soft wrap around her ankle. It appears to be a small insect. Analyzing. That's adorable. <laughs> Analysis complete. Creature appears to be a tartar. Genus Mollusca gastropoda. Male. Landa looked down upon the small... Tartar, as it continues to seamlessly wave its tentacles about, all the while still clinging to her ankle. It's obviously still a little more than a baby. It playfully climbs up Landa's leg without any sense of fear, and it then begins to sway to the beat of an unheard ribbon. Oh, are you lost? Who are you? What are you doing in a place like this? Did you get separated from your mommy or something? Mommy? Hmm? As she kneels to eye level with Landa, a smile lights up Makoto's face. Her round ears twitch as her big bushy tail waves happily. Beastkin, humanoid species. Wow! I'm surprised that you know what I am. Do you have a friend like me or something? Oopsie. Probably not. <laughs> um, are you okay? You're not scared or anything, are you? Scared? Because you were standing all alone here. You lost your way, right? No. Huh? Then why are you... Wait. Oh my god, is 
that a tartar wrapped around your leg? As soon as she identifies the insect clinging to Landa's uh, uh, leg, Makoto begins in to scamper er, in delight. Oh my god, what is it doing here? I've never seen one up close before. This one is super rare, you know? Oh, I see now. Is this one your pet? Pet. Landa looks up at Makoto with a confused look on her face. What am I saying? There's no way it could be a pet. I just remembered that Tartars are actually pretty smart. They really wouldn't make very good pets. This one is still tiny. It must be a baby. I wonder if it got separated from its parents. Heart rate steadily decreasing. Huh? 58. 57. 56. Are you talking about the Tartar? Wait a minute, it's hurt! What should we do? We have to do something! If we don't do anything right this instant, it might die! Come on, don't you have any ideas? Oh, I know! Watercress! I might be able to find some around here! Let's go find some! Makoto grabs Landa's arm and heads off into the bush. Makoto and Landa began to grab every bit of watercress they could find. Makoto then cuts the stems off one of the plants they had gathered and puts some of the sticky fluid that comes out onto Landa's finger. Now put that on the tartar's wound. Landa gently lays her finger on the wounded tartar. Or it it stuffles for a second, but doesn't resist or even flinch when Landa rubs the mysterious. The mysterious, miscorious, I think that's how, I don't know how you probably say that, fluid on it on its injury. Okay. That's pretty much all we can do right now. So how's it doing? Heart rate, normal. Hooray! I'm so relieved. As she wipes the sweat off her forehead, Makoto smiles. The tartar of the genus Mollusca gastropoda, male, is rare. Is that why you wish to preserve its life? Um... Why? Are you asking me why I helped it? Yes. Uh, why? Just because? Huh? Because it was still alive. I didn't want it to die. But it might die anyway. It is true that we can't nurture insects like this one. However, we can help them when they're in trouble. For example, tending any wounds they might have. After that, well, it's all up to them. <sighs> Wait a second. You were just thinking, why stop halfway, weren't you? Not really. I know you were. It's written all over your face. No, it's not. I know, I know. I'm aware that I'm not doing everything that I could. However, although everyone needs a hand sometimes, it's just as important to do things for yourself. Sometimes all a person needs is a little help. Help? Yes. If you find yourself trapped in a bad situation, sometimes all you need is a little help from someone. Uh, you need help? Me? I was lucky to have a friend help me before. You see, beastkin aren't the most popular species around. I don't know why, but someone once told me that I stank like an animal. I mean, how much ruder could they have been? And to a beautiful maiden such as myself. I was in shock. It crushed me badly and... Crush? Did it hurt? Uh, yeah, it did. You should have seeked immediate attention. You're right. But I didn't know how. I was a 
wasn't sure exactly where it hurt either. Hurt. Hurt. That was when Noel and Tsubaki found me. Oh, they were both my friends. They asked me, does it hurt right here? And then gently touched me where the pain was at its worst. It was because of them that I learned where the pain was coming from. It hurts if you touch the wound. Oh, how I know. It hurt when they first touched it. But I tried touching it myself. Then I began to squeeze the poison out of it. <laughs> as soon as I did that, I felt great. It was completely healed. Seriously, though, if those two didn't show up and helped me when they did, I don't know what I would have done. It doesn't hurt anymore. Landa bent down and picked up some watercress, then handed to Makoto. It hurts. Here. <laughs> Thanks, but I'm fine now. I learned that for every bad thing, there's a whole bunch more good things out there. So when bad things happen, I'm able to just look beyond them. Good things? You know, talking about cute boys with friends, enjoying a well-made espresso at a coffee shop, getting dressed up for a night on the town, just the little things that make life fun. Those two gave me a chance to get on with my life. The little, the little Tatar wraps itself around Landa's leg again. It looks up at her, as though waiting for her to react in some way. When Landa looked down at the little creature, it waved its tentacles, almost as if it was trying to express its happiness. See? We gave it a chance to live its life. Me? Yep. Me and, um, what's your name? Lambda. As I was saying, it was me and Lambda that gave it a chance. Without responding, Landa suddenly turns and begins to walk away. The little Tartar slips off her leg. Landa? I have to go. Are you heading back home? I was instructed not to make any detours. Oh. Okay. But... What are you going to do about him? <sighs> Landa turns her attention to where Makoto is pointing. The little Tartar is waddling in towards Landa, rapidly moving its tiny legs. It looks like you've made a friend, Landa. Inconvenient. Landa increases her pace, trying to put as much distance between her and the little Tartar as possible. Landa hears Makoto yell from a distance. Landa looked over her shoulder to see the Tartar trying valiantly to keep up with her. It continues to move slowly but surely in her direction. Landa stops where she is and stares at the little insect as it tries to catch up with her. Landa, be careful when you pick it up. Um, why don't you just put it on the watercress? A smile lights up from Makoto's face as she calls out to Landa. Landa realizes that Makoto is talking about the leaves that she had forgotten she was carrying. Landa places her leaf-covered hand on the ground. The little Tartar finally catches up with Landa and, seeing her hand on the ground, crawls onto it without hesitation. Landa feels the weight of the Tartar's precious life in her hand. After swaying happily on her paw arm for a while, the little Tartar stretches itself out and then curls up, up, retracting its four tentacles in, into itself. It looks like it has fallen asleep. Landa gently cups her hands around the peaceful sleeping Tartar. She starts to walk again with, with a somewhat nervous look on her face. The next time we get together, be sure to bring the Tartar along with you. Oh, I just had a great idea! Next time, I'll bring a camera along so we can take a picture together. I know it'd make Tsubaki and Noel so jealous. Landa stops again and turns to face Makoto's direction. She nods her head once.
Oh, looks like you're finally back, Lambda. Uh. Sorry for... well, whatever that was. Not sure what could have caused an error like that. Anyway, let's take a look at you. Sit down. The little... Uh, tar... I'm trying to... I keep saying Tartar, I'm trying to say it how they, how they say it, but I'm struggling with that. He's like, Tutti Tar? Wrapped up in the watercress is still asleep. Landa isn't sure how to bring it up to Kokonoe and finds herself almost paralyzed with indecision. Without looking up at Landa, Kokonoe begins to rapidly type away at her keyboard. I said sit down. I don't have a lot of time. Understood. Landa carefully places the watercress leaves on the edge of the desk. What the hell? Ugh. I guess Lambda ran into somebody. This isn't good. As Kokonori reaches for her coffee cup, her fingertips brush across something unexpectedly moist. Huh? What's this? Kokonori picks up the small wad of watercress leaves and looks looks at it question questioningly. Watercress? Must have gotten stuck to Lambda somehow. Kokonori steps on the butt. Uh, on a button near her feet, opening a small hole in the floor. She then and casually tosses the bundle into the trash. The watercress leaves, with its still sleeping in tartar, is sucked down and out a series of tubes and into the basement. Alright, I guess that's it for data removal. Loading. 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 How are you feeling, Lambda? Everything alright? As Landa regains consciousness, she slowly scans the lab with her eyes. The same cluttered lab, the untidy desk, a cup of lukewarm coffee, wads of scrap paper, Kokonoe and herself. Landa's fingers, which were once wet from the watercress, had already dried completely. Lambda? Nothing is wrong. And that is Landa's gag reel. It acted more like a little side story, and interestingly enough, this gag reel would actually make it into the anime version of Blaze Blue, um, Altered Memory, which would cover the events of Calamity Trigger and uh, Continuum Shift. But anyway, uh, we will end this episode here, and in the next bonus video, we will do Subaki's bonus uh, gag reel. So if you enjoyed this episode, do like the video as it helps tremendously. Subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment down below on your thoughts of this episode, and share the video so way more people can discover my content and help the channel grow. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Later!